to move that onto there, onto his pillow, that's to collect some blood, and I actually usually put a couple of extras, because it's quite uncomfortable for the patient to have their arm resting in blood. So we usually just put those there. Right, septic. We're just re-cleaning our hands again. Both of us do that. now going to self-cannulate or self-needle, whichever way you wish to talk. <laughs> Always does the red one first. Taking the needle and removing the cap and then just checking basically the fistula as to where you're going to be putting this, <coughs> checking that everything's in place so that when you're ready to place the needle in, you just simply push very easily and it goes in, just then push slightly more. Again, I just wipe that as has been quite good on that one. No no blood, just in case. And then to secure the needle, take one of your five and secure it over the butterfly sections. Holds the needle in place. So taking the syringe and pull the top to bring the blood through and check your flow, not pushing all the way down because you don't want air in your system. There's a good flow and there's no pain. So what we'll do from there is get to this point. That's okay. Okay. We then clamp that off and we put on number two of the five over the second part of the needle. And that's the first needle done. Next we'll take the blue needle, pulling back the wings, removing the cap. And I do this so I know where the needle is going to be going. And place again against the skin and gently push. It's an easy one to do. Oh, it's a very good one to do. Yes. We do normally get a little bit of blood. Again, tape down to hold the needle in position. Again, check the syringe in syringe flow. Do this every time. do is take those away, which then means Alan can now have his arm without any consistent blood. Because it's got blood on it, you put it in your blood bag. Okay. Alan is now ready to go on. I usually put a glove on this hand because it's just one of those issues that it does tend to get cold when sitting here for a couple of hours. Um, it keeps you warm and then we're ready to start. We're ready to go. Okay, what we have to do then is stop the pump, clamp all four pieces again down the roller and your saline down there. We'll take the 
the red line. And disconnect that. Alan holds that so it's not that way. And make sure the red goes to the red. Make sure you don't touch the connections. Just flip that. Through. Do the same with the blue line. Don't need that anymore. And again, make sure you don't touch the connections. Put that in there. And in case where you're wondering why the fifth one, that will hold his lines in place comfortably. Ready? Yep, okay, that's okay. And we then unclamp, 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 unclamp. Press the start. Make sure you put your pump back on and then we gently increase the speed. Taking an out of these and checking that Alan feels okay. The first main thing you don't want to do is put it on too high a speed so it pulls the blood out of his arm too quickly. We're going to build up to Alan's normal level, which is 365. I'm at 300 at the moment, as you can see the blood's going through and it's now coming through. It will alarm in a moment, just to say. See. Press the on off button there, so that he's now on the machine for dialysing, and then press that. The arterial venous pressure and TMP will sort themselves out. It will usually do that. I press it three times, it will then come up with new limits, and you will see these barriers. And then you've got the bright one, which is where he is and the two faded ones are the higher and lower levels and he should alarm now because it's just on his venous pressure right on the top there you go, venous pressure is doing that nothing to worry about just one, two, three and again it will reset its levels and over a period of time you will get to know your individual patient's normal figures Alan usually sits around 100 and 40, 160 on air. Again, it's a little bit tight on there just to give it a bit of leeway because it will fluctuate while he's on the machine. That's good. If it's down here, we will normally tend to look at the needling and maybe have to change the needle in position um, because it's not a good flow. But I can tell, and Alan can tell, these are in his good flow figures and we have no worries. See, the time now is creeping down to 158, which means he's got 1 hour and 58 minutes. And normally what I will do is, after 30 minutes, record the rest of the figures. So I will record his venous pressure, his TMP, and also on here he will have a flow need to do so you move it up to number four which is blood flow calculation press confirm effective blood flow press confirm and he's on three two six millilitres that's a little bit low for Alan can range from 320 318s up to about 333 for Alan if we know it's on the 330 it's going to be a very good one it's on the 320s it's a medium one if it's down to 318 it's not so good but every day is different depending on how the needles have worked.